Welcome back everyone to the GT40 head swap on the Fox Body Mustang. Today we're going to be talking about a couple very important things, top dead center and compression stroke. We need to know both those things in order to get a clean start when we finally fire this thing up. I'm going to talk about a few different methods, um, if you have your valve covers on, if you don't, also if your harmonic balancer has timing marks on it or if it doesn't. We're going to talk about all that, stay tuned. Before we locate the compression stroke, let's quickly talk about finding top dead center because that does vary per application. In my case, I've got a brand new Ford harmonic balancer that has factory timing marks. I'm very confident in those marks. Now, if you are not confident in the timing marks on your balancer, or maybe you had timing tape that fell off, you're going to need to replace the timing tape. So get the diameter of your balancer, go get new timing tape, and at the same time, get a piston stop. That is going to be the most effective tool to figure out top dead center. We don't have a piston stop for this engine. I couldn't find one. They're probably out there for the GT40 heads. But um, I'm going to show you how you would use a piston stop and just take you through the process because I think it's a little unclear. I'm also going to show you how I'm just going to use a screwdriver and a sense of uh, touch in order to find out when the piston stops and then when it starts. So um, first of all, let's get to the compression stroke. All right, first, let's figure out where our compression stroke is. I know people some, have some problems with that, so I'm going to give you a couple different methods to determine it. The best being if you have your valve covers off. You can easily see the rocker arms here. You've got our exhaust valve here, our intake valve here. We'll simply need to watch these and see how they open. If you don't have your valve cover off, if you don't want to take your valve cover off, I'm going to show you another way, so stay tuned. But first of all, we're going to do it this way. So. Initially, our exhaust valve is going to open, then it's going to close, then our intake will open, then our intake will close, and we will be very close to top dead center at that point. So I'm going to cycle through, let you see what that looks like. Watch the exhaust arm rock around right here. There we go, it's opening, and I'm turning the motor clockwise. Now it's starting to close. Now our intake's opening, and now it will start to close. Sorry about the shakiness of the camera. So now we got closed intake, okay? Now, it's not moving anymore, but we are far from top dead center. So having to just eyeball this without any timing marks is extremely difficult and why you need the piston stopper. So um, it, this is our compression stroke though. That's what we are verifying right now. We're on the compression stroke. So if you don't have your valve covers on, here's how to find the compression stroke. Now that we know a good way to figure out the compression stroke with the valve covers off, let's pretend we've got them on, okay? I'm just gonna mock this up for now, just pretend this is on, because I still want you to have the visual of the rocker arms uh, moving uh, as I spin the engine. So we're gonna take this off, but just pretend that it is on there. So all you're gonna do is get a shop towel, crunch it up into about the size of your spark plug hole. We're just gonna fill we're going to push that in there snugly, and we're going to spin the engine, okay? So remember, we were at top dead center on the compression stroke just a moment ago. So we're going to have the exhaust valve open, and we're going to have the intake open, and you know we're going to go through all four strokes of the uh, burn cycle. So here we are, and we've got our exhaust valve opening. That means our piston's traveling up, pushing the exhaust out. Okay, now the piston is probably around top dead center. Now, the intake valve is opening. That's letting our air and gas in. Now our intake is closed, so our piston is on the way back up. But remember, we can't see any of this because our valve cover's on, remember? Let's see what happens on a compression stroke. See that? It's shot right out of there. We've got bo both valves closed. So all that pressure had to go somewhere and it shot that paper right out of there. If you were on the exhaust compression uh, cycle, this valve is going to be opening for you, relieving the pressure. So you're not gonna get any false positives there, okay? So that method is good. We've found the compression stroke with the valve covers on. Okay, now we know where our compression stroke is. We can make sure that our timing marks on our balancer are accurate. So. As those things are happening, we are looking for the zero on 
this balancer. I know it's not exactly easy to read on camera, but what I will tell you is right now, we are at zero. Uh, this is zero. So if you don't have any marks on your balancer, I'm gonna show you just a quick and easy way. Again, the piston stopper is the way to go with this. But if you have marks like I do and you simply wanna verify, um, this way I think suffices if you have a pretty good trust that your timing is accurate. Okay, now that we've determined we are on the compression stroke, we're simply going to use this little device in order to verify top dead center. Now again, this is for only those of you who, for the most part, trust the marks on your balancer. If you don't have any marks and you need to set top dead center, this is not the method for you. You will need a piston stop in order to do this. But basically, we're gonna insert this into the spark plug hole and we're gonna wait for it to stop moving. We're gonna be having the piston come in contact with this area. And once it stops, we're gonna reference our balancer and see what's going on. So, I'm just gonna insert it into the spark plug hole. And we're gonna spin very slowly, very small increments, okay? I'm just gonna wait for the piston to impact the head of the screwdriver, and it should do that right, it just did it right now. So we can keep our screwdriver on the piston and slowly, slowly spin the motor. And you'd be able to feel the piston moving the screwdriver, okay? At this point, I can't really feel it anymore. Um, in fact, I'm gonna back up a little bit because we went past. That's why it's important to do it slowly. So, spin your crank, you can feel the piston, and now I feel, 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 feel. Okay, I don't feel anything anymore. And I'm gonna come over and look at my uh, balancer, and we are right on zero. So I was able to uh, accurately, you know, tell that the balancer marks are good. Now, um, you might be, you know, if you stop feeling the piston move, um, you know, one or two degrees before TDC as indicated on your balancer, just trust your balancer. Um, those small uh, degree movements you may not be able to feel, but um, if you have confidence that your balancer is accurate as I did, you'll be able to simply verify it using this method. It's honestly that simple. All right, and now let's pretend that you don't have any marks on your balancer and you need to find top dead center. So first of all, you found the compression stroke okay. You've either taken your valve cover off and checked the opening and the closing of the rockers or the valves, or you've um, you know plugged your spark plug hole and saw a piece of paper fly out of it. Whatever way you did, uh, we know we're on the compression stroke, okay? That's very important. So let's pretend our piston stop is in, okay? And we're going to be rotating our crank over, all right? So we're rotating, 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 rotating. Okay, and boom, we just hit our piston stop, our pretend piston stop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some tape and we're gonna use some sort of marker on the engine that doesn't move. And you're gonna to wanna to put a mark there, tape, mark, whatever. Um, just make sure that it's marked. So that's our mark. Now we're gonna reverse rotation and go counterclockwise. So we're gonna spin the motor counterclockwise. And we're gonna wait for our piston to impact our pretend piston stopper. Now we're gonna be going slow. We don't wanna damage the piston. So we're going, 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 and stop. We hit our pretend piston stop. So we're gonna mark that location just like before on this, in the same way using the same mark. Okay, and we're right there. So basically, what we now have are two tape pieces or marks wherever you did, and you just need to find the middle of those. Okay, right there on this particular one. So right in the center of these two marks is going to be your top dead center. And if you're using a piston stop, that's gonna be highly accurate. And you can go ahead, if you have timing tape then, find zero on your timing tape and apply it right in the middle, right on this mark. All right, thanks for staying with the video, everyone. I hope this kind of cleared up confusion around finding top dead center and the compression stroke. I know those two things can be confusing, so I hope this did help. And hey, our next video is going to be adjusting the valve train. We're going to uh, go cylinder by cylinder per the firing order and getting our uh, rocker arms tightened down the right way. So really, that's it, uh, the last technical piece in this puzzle. 
and then the rest is just kind of bolt on. So um, we are almost there. And if you want to see that, hit subscribe. If this video helped you, please hit like. It really does help the channel. So thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.